University of Michigan Soccer Stadium. The Ultras are out in full force. The battle of the Big Bear, Michigan and Michigan State. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Michigan Wolverines featuring their freshman in goal. Osman and Hallahan play wide in this 4-4-2 system. Look for the Wolverines to push high, so it might even look like a 4-2-4 when they're on the attack. Michigan State, because of injury, really have to go to a 3-5-2, and that'll be the first time they're truly rolling out a 3-5-2 to start. First time they've done it all season. Look for Sterenberg and Ogunwale out wide to sit back defensively at times, making it look like a 5-3-2. Damon Rensing's been involved in all 19 previous Big Bear games. He played at Michigan State, assistant coach at Michigan State, coach in waiting under Joe Baum, and then took over the reins more than half his life in the green and white. You see the Spartans come out in their visiting whites, a team that has been decimated by injuries, Michigan State. Meanwhile, Shaka Daly, he joined Michigan in 2012. First battle of the Big Bear against Michigan State. He won one to nothing. Kofi Opari, a goal in the 70th minute. You see his record with Michigan. They got in the NCAA tournament last year, made a ton of noise, took Notre Dame to the death and penalty kicks before Notre Dame finally won out. Or who knows, it could have been Michigan and Michigan State in the College Cup a year ago. Absolutely, Michigan and Michigan State, two perennial strong programs here in the Big Ten looking to kick this one off here in Ann Arbor. Tuesday night in Ann Arbor with the Big Bear belonging to Michigan State the last three years. Michigan State has been pretty dominant in this battle of the Big Bear that was started back in 2000 by former head coach of Michigan, Steve Burns. Steve Burns, actually from East Lansing, came to Michigan because he wanted to be an engineer or he could have played at Michigan State. Became the club coach. Then in 2000, when he took over, he called Joe Baum and said, Joe, we got to have something to celebrate the greatness of this game. And he found the bear. We'll have more on that at halftime on where he found the bear. But now in year 20, and if you win, so right now Michigan's got to win outright. Otherwise, the Bears stays with Michigan State because they own it. A tie is not good enough. It'll stay in East Lansing if the Spartans draw or win. Little flick. What a story for Michigan, though. Owen Finnerty as Andrew Verdi took a shot from Ben Lees from Wisconsin the last game. He's been so good in goal, but not available tonight. So Owen Finnerty, how about that? Yeah, young man, you're going to make your debut for Michigan against Michigan State in the Battle of the Big Bear on the Big Ten Network. No pressure whatsoever, but Coach Shaka Daly likes this kid, thinks he has what it takes to not only compete this evening, but throughout his career in the maize and blue. This is... I got to, I mean, Chris, I got to admit, this is the one game early on you're like, got to get on that game, got to get on that game because it's so intense, so physical, and as you said, might even be one of the better rivalries in all of men's college soccer. Jack Hallahan, last year's Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Michigan State without last year's Big Ten Midfielder of the Year, Giuseppe Baroni. There's Hallahan, not available to play against your Indiana Hoosiers where they really looked good against Indiana. Indiana, of course, getting the win. And then, as always, a little bit of hangover after that game as Michigan struggled the next game before getting back you know, on tact against a good Notre Dame team. Well, one thing we'll talk about throughout the telecast is how the month of October in Division I soccer is oftentimes so brutal with midweek and weekend games. The uh, idea of regeneration and training is so hard to come by given the brutal schedule. So both of these teams have faced injury issues all season long. Michigan State, Jack Beck. Beck will sit in front of those three in the back, and you see it with Patrick Nielsen. No Michael Watungu, who's one of the better defenders, he's out. No Baroni, who's only played 45 minutes all year and not expected to play anymore this season. Giuseppe Baroni, that's a major loss. And even Patrick Nielsen just now getting into form after missing half the games to start the season. 
No Will Perkins, who played in the first game, has been out ever since. This is Michigan State's story this year. A lot of injuries as Ibarra grew up in Ann Arbor. He knows all about the battle of the Big Bear if you grow up in Ann, Ann Arbor. Smart professional foul there by Miller. Saw Ibarra was going to take his space. Just make sure he's not able to advance that ball. With Michigan State coming into this game third in the conference and fouls committed in Michigan right in front of them at number two in the conference. Keep an eye out for how many fouls we see in this potentially nasty interstate derby. Well said. Just five minutes in. Michigan trying to find Hallahan. Cleared out of there by Stierenberg, who's played left back most of the year. He is right footed. Here's Farai Mutatu. And the first real touch for Finnerty. Looked like he had pretty good positioning. Brought his paw back, and it'll come back as a goal kick. This is going to be interesting for the Spartans tonight because now that they have two up top with Mutatu and George, he's able to get all of his defenders isolated 1v1, put an effort on frame, not quite there. And conversely, if you're Owen Finnerty, you're glad to see that shot go wide. You had your goal covered. And here we are with Michigan building out of the back through Reagan. Barra. Samake to Reagan. Part of that great back line, normally in front of Andrew Birdie. Hallahan. Good ball right down the middle. Trying to find Broach. No whistle and out of bounds. Last year. The Battle of the Big Bear finishes a 1-1 tie. Back scored first in the 53rd minute, assisted by Pimlot, who played against a lot of these Michigan players. Then Noah Kleepke, with the assist from Swike, who starts tonight, tied it in the 78th minute, keeping the Big Bear in East Lansing for three consecutive years. The years prior, 2016, Brad Santala scored early, and Michigan State held on to win 1-0. And then, of course, in 2017, it was an overtime thriller. Dewan Jones, who had such an amazing year this year for the New England Revolution, playing a ton of minutes. One of many Spartans in Major League Soccer making an impact. Dewan Jones with that exciting winner back in 2017. Hallahan. Jack Hallahan can do things that others can't. Tellez. Carlos Tellez getting the start. Picked up here by Harrison, the Canadian, finally healthy. Shaka Daly waited over two years for Harrison to get healthy and be ready to roll. And when he did, he got the captain's armband. Great work here by Hallahan in the first five minutes, getting involved. We've seen him get to the end line and serve one in. A nifty little pass through to set up a potential opportunity for Tejas. And now here with him on the ball for an in-swinging free kick on the right flank. Next level talent indeed, Jack Hallahan. And you're right, Michigan State has had longer term injuries, but Michigan's been banged up as well as Muhammad Zaki, has missed a ton of action. Even Umar Farouk Osman has missed some games. Hallahan missing that game against Indiana. Michigan is loaded, though, just like Michigan State. They're loaded if they can get everybody healthy. The big if in college soccer with so many games crammed into a three, four month period. Hallahan over the ball, served in. Farai Mutatu. Good little touch there to George and Swike. He had that assist a year ago. We'll clean it up. Yeah, Chris Monroe, it is gaining momentum, the 21st century motto, led by one of our Big Ten coaches, Sasso Sarosky, as well as coaches all over the country. But Chad Hawley actually telling me they met today at the Big Ten Conference for their final request for proposal to be submitted to the NCAA on Friday. And of course, they'll vote in April for the opportunity to stretch out the men's college soccer season. 
into a fall and spring season. That train has left the building and it's picking up steam. And certainly with the NCAA and news today based on paying for athletes' rights uh, to use their likenesses in certain situations. It's just another example of hopefully how the NCAA can come further and further into the 21st century and support these student athletes. Throw in for Michigan. Off of Michigan State will be a corner kick. Corner kick, Wolverines. Nice crowd here at this beautiful complex. Every team in Ann Arbor's got unbelievable facilities. It's just incredible. Look here for Ibarra to whip one in, looking for the head of Reagan or Samake. Reagan makes the near post run, back post, still loose in front. And Popovich scores. But we haven't even got to his qualities as he leads the Big Ten in goals. Nabosha Popovich has made it one nothing Michigan. Great job here by the Wolverines to stay with the play. The initial ball sent in by Ibarra towards the back post. Looked like Harrison or Broche was in the mix trying to get their head on it. Popovich with the ability to put it on frame. Might have actually taken a touch off Reagan before it went into the back of the net. No matter what, they'll take the pinball action and the one goal lead. Yeah, they'll give it to Popovich as it pinballed off two Michigan State players, not Reagan. So ninth goal this season for the transfer from Oakland, who Shaka Daly said he tried three times to get him to come, the initial recruiting time, then one time as he moved to Oakland, and then finally his grad student year, Popovich said yes to coming to Michigan. And Popovich scored a goal in every Oakland versus Michigan game, including this year, representing the Michigan Wolverines. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I know especially after that goal right there to break the deadlock, Coach Daly is pleased that he decided to join the Maize and Blue. And you can hear the ultras making all kinds of noise. Good run by Michigan. Derek Broach, the sophomore from Novi, Michigan. And we got a yellow card issued early here. The yellow card going to Nick Woodruff, the redshirt sophomore. Good effort by Woodruff to get in on the tackle. Broch just too crafty, lifting the ball over Woodruff's outstretched leg, leading to not only the yellow card, but another dangerous free kick opportunity for the Wolverines. All right. There's been plenty of yellow cards, even red cards, over the years in the battle of the Big Bear. That thriller a couple years ago on this field featuring multiple cards. Free kick opportunity for Michigan, trying to make it 2 nothing. What a start for the Michigan Wolverines, though. They've been on the front foot in the first 10 minutes here in the game, looking to get Hallahan involved on the right side of the flank, but also, too, making sure that Popovich is getting involved, holding up the ball up front. 7-0 and 2 when Marky Barra's Michigan Wolverines score first. Michigan State coming off an unbelievable run, returning to the College Cup for the first time since 1968 as they were joined by Indiana and Maryland a year ago. But this year with all that promise led by Giuseppe Baroni, but without Baroni, Admittedly, it's a different team. You're talking about the reigning Big Ten midfielder of the year playing just 45 minutes all season. Certainly not fair, nor what Coach Damon Rensing was expecting, but he's been very pleased with how his Spartans have responded to adversity all season long. Now that they're down a goal here against their rival, let's see how they respond in the next five to 10. Hallahan with that great left foot. Hunter Morse continuing the long tradition of great goalkeepers at Michigan State. Think about reflecting on this, the 20th year of the Big Bear and Shaka Daly winning that first one. It was Adam Grinwis in goal for Michigan, Zach Bennett in goal for Michigan State. Talk about two great goalkeepers, Adam Grinwis, big personality, still 
play in MLS. Great personality, great keeper as well. Both of those goalies had fantastic careers at their respective universities. I will say Michigan State ended up winning the Big Ten Tournament Championship game in Evanston that same year, two to one in overtime. Sean Connerty is this one will go to the top of the 18. It'll fall, Sternberg over to Pimlot. Pimlot, as we demonstrated off the top, that brilliant goal against Maryland in that 1-1 tie. So I like the ability or thought there of Pimlot to get service in the box. One thing Michigan State is going to have to do, because they're defending three center backs, two wide backs, three mids, they're going to have to advance the ball and try to possess in Michigan's defensive half to make sure that they can withstand some of the pressure and build the game from there. Nielsen. George, good little touch, Matatu. Matatu. Farai Mutatu. He's one of those walking, talking human highlight reels when he gets going. Here's Matatu, deflected by that unbelievable back line. Second best defense in the conference. Popovich, what a pickup. A team that already had a lot of attacking quality. Added a good one via the transfer window. Grad student Popovich with the goal so far. Committing, committing the foul there, but on the scorer's sheet due to this corner kick and the little toe poke to get it on frame. The old pinball action between the two Spartans still ending up in the back of the net for Popovich's ninth in the campaign. That leads the Big Ten. Aaron Malloy with Penn State got an assist and a game with Maryland that means so much. That's in overtime, 2-2. Maryland got off to a 2-0 lead, and Coach Jeff Cook's Penn State team came back to tie it. Malloy got an assist, but now taking over the points lead is Popovich with that goal. Samake sends it long, picked up by Jack Hallahan. Boy, he has shown some brilliant qualities already in this one. He's everywhere trying to make his impact felt, both on the wing, also drifting inside and using his favored left foot, not only to attack defenders off the dribble, but get services into the middle of the park to his dangerous forwards like Popovich and Broach. Spartans over the course of the last four or five minutes able to put their foot on the ball a little bit, get a couple attacks into Michigan's defensive half, but unable to create that pressure and put something on frame, testing the young freshman goalkeeper, Finnerty. Phenomenal tackle by Nielsen, stopping the Hallahan attack. Open Wally will play it forward to Connor George. George Samake will bring it back to the youngster, Owen Finnerty who has been part of the U.S. under-18 team. He played for Detroit City FC, so he's played in front of big crowds. So Shaka Daly said he would be ready for that. He's got a twin brother, Joshua, that also plays soccer for Cal Tech, and his dad played soccer, Brian, at San Diego State. So I'd say he's ready for this moment. And, and Coach Shaka Daly said just that, the fact that DCFC has been getting crowds over the summer, four, five, six thousand people. He was able to play six, seven games over the course of the summer, while this certainly is a new NCAA experience for him in a heightened, uh, intense Big Ten match. He's no stranger to these type of environments. And we certainly hope that Andrew Verde, who's had a great senior year from Ivyland, Pennsylvania, will be able to come back, but in the meantime, it's Owen Finnerty's chance making his debut as Michigan tries to reclaim the Big Bear. It's not been in their possession since 2015 when they had a 1-0 win thanks to a James Murphy goal. By the way, we can tell you that Penn State has just beat Maryland in overtime, what a win for Penn State Nittany Lions. They still got a legitimate shot. Popovich, Umar Farouk Osman showing his leadership qualities as a junior, the right to dreamer, 
from Ghana, just like Francis Atuaheni and Mohamed Zaki, who's on the team now, part of that incredible right to dream where they come over from Ghana, get placed in a prep school, and then get a chance to play college soccer at a pretty high level. Wonderful story and a great opportunity for all of these student athletes to get wonderful experience. Tejas. It'll be a goal kick for Michigan State. Mich Michigan maintaining a high line here on the goal kick, not letting Nielsen get the ball and play out of the back like they'd like to. We welcome all of you that just watched Penn State's thriller as Penn State goes to 10, 2, and 3 on the year with their come from behind win over Maryland three to two alongside former Indiana goalkeeper Chris Monroe I'm Dean Linky and Michigan led by Nabosha Popovich already with a one nothing lead over Michigan State in the 20th annual Battle of the Big Bear the Big Bear being held the last three years by Michigan State if it ended right now that bear would come back to Ann Arbor for the first time since 2015. We've seen a nicely contested game so far. Nabosha Popovich scoring off of a corner kick earlier for his ninth goal on the season. Interesting to see Michigan doing a good job of possessing the ball, attacking Michigan State's back half of the field. Going to be uh, interesting to see how the Spartans regroup and then try to position themselves accordingly at the end of the first half. Michigan not known for scoring first half goals. It's their first Michigan goal in the first half since September 21 against Rutgers. Popovich also scored that. Osman looking for Popovich to make it 2 0. Nabosha Popovich able to pinball one in off of two Michigan State players just less than five minutes in. Great combination play, slip through ball by Broach, but an even better play by Nick Stone, the youngster, to clear it out and keep it away from Popovich in the final third of the field. Throw in for Austin Swike, who had the assist to Noah Kleedke a year ago in the Big Bear game in East Lansing. The tie though, not good enough to take the bear back on the bus. It stayed in East Lansing as we've told you. They'll switch it to Harrison. How about Jeff Cook in just two years at Penn State? He's got the Nittany Lions knocking on the door of a Big Ten regular season title. Quite a turnaround, building off of the tradition of great coaches, Walter Barr, Barry Gorman, and smiling Bob Warming, leading the Nittany Lions to the cusp of another Big Ten title. Harrison pushing forward, will go off of Harrison, throw in back to Michigan State. Outstanding crowd here at University of Michigan Soccer Stadium, home to the Michigan men's and women's soccer teams. As the Michigan women doing well, the ultras, the great student fan base for Michigan soccer out in full force here on a Tuesday night. Great to see it. Steve Burns coached in this game from the inception 2000 until 2011. And it was Steve Burns and the legendary Joe Baum who made it happen. But really, Steve Burns was the man behind it, called Joe Baum and said, we got to do something. Joe said, I'm in. Steve said, all right, I'll find a trophy. And he found one. We'll tell you that complete story at halftime. Stay with us here. Right now, it's 1-0 Michigan on top. Reagan, safety first to be a throw in Michigan State. Nice job by the Spartans the last few minutes to possess in Michigan's half of the field, switching it from side to side, keeping the Michigan defenders on their toes. Samake will head it out. Hey, 
Broach not able to handle it. Derek Broach, sophomore from Novi, Michigan. Umar Farouk Osman, back touch. Michigan State playing with three in the back. Hallahan. Hallahan, yes, he's got a great left foot, but we've seen him score with his right and send in pretty good balls with his right as well. Umar Farouk Osman. Osman, couple step overs. Back to Hallahan. Hallahan, he can hit it from here. Great ball into Broach, and Broach's header not there. What a ball from Hallahan to Derek Broach at six feet tall. Broach heads it over the crossbar. Broach looking for his fifth goal on the season. Great work here by Hallahan to get it on the right side. Track all the way to the left, receive the ball from Osman, put one into the box. Broach almost able to nod it into the back of the net, just heading it over, Hunter Morse's goal. Great to be with Chris Monroe, former goalkeeper and coach with Indiana. Michigan Soccer Stadium. Wolverines on top, one to nothing. Battle in the midfield, Reagan comes in hard. And we've seen one yellow for Michigan State, and now Reagan will get a yellow. And clearly, they are not going to let this one get out of control. Was, I don't think there was a whole lot of malice there, but the referee just checking everybody at the door here. Reagan going up, getting over George with the header. However, I think he may have had his elbow up, which would have led to the dangerous play yellow card right there. Shaka Daly coming over from his alma mater, Providence, taking over for Coach Burns in 2012. Took his team to the NCAA tournament that first year and back again last year. And the word on the street from the resident expert on RPI, who's, by the way, also having a great season, Tim Lenahan, the top man at Northwestern, is if at the end of the day, Michigan would squeeze in, but they don't like the notion of squeezing or being on the bubble, nor does Tim Lenahan and Northwestern, who sitting at 500, they could win their last two games, make some noise in the Big Ten tournament. They could also get in. For sure, Indiana, Maryland, and Penn State, I feel like you can say, punch their ticket, they're in the NCAA tournament. And what's interesting is obviously that they're playing for the vaunted Big Bear Trophy this evening, but what they're also trying to do, in addition to winning the Interstate Derby, is put themselves in a position to host a quarterfinal game in the Big Ten Conference Tourney coming up in a couple weeks' time. We see the RPI right here, Michigan again on that proverbial bubble. What's going to be fascinating to see is can seeds two through five in the conference who will wind up hosting that conference quarterfinal position themselves to be that fourth or fifth Big Ten team to make it into the NCAA tournament with those 48 participants. Shaka Daly didn't want to talk a lot about the RPI. There's still business at hand, right? They still got games left and in his mind, they still felt like, who knows, maybe something crazy could happen up at the top. But Penn State getting the win as six points are still on the line for Michigan. But you saw now Penn State, their RPI will climb and Maryland's won't get hurt. So that's why Indiana, Penn State, and Maryland are locks for the NCAA tournament. Nielsen, there are 20 minutes remaining here in the first half. The Big Bear was on the bus from East Lansing where it's lived the last three years. Taken away by Harrison. Hallahan, he's got Broach in front of him. He also has Popovich, foul called against Michigan State. Fifth foul for the Spartans. We talked earlier how the Wolverines and Spartans are two and three in the conference in terms of fouls committed. We're seeing a lot of that here tonight, especially with Beck taking out Hallahan right there in the attacking third of the field. Yellow cards to Reagan and a yellow card to Nick Woodruff for Michigan State. Samake to Ibada. Popovich, one goal away from double-digit goals for Popovich. Ta, 
Reagan, part of the Sounders system. Here's Harrison, Callahan, making the overlapping run. Sternberg on the mark of Pimlot. Pimlot reminding his team that as long as he's been in Sparty World, that big bear has belonged in his property. The senior not looking to let that go today. And one thing to notice is that while Michigan State is playing a 3-5-2, when they're absorbing pressure from the Wolverines, it almost at times looks like they're in a 5-3-2 with the three center backs, the two wide backs sitting so deep that they're absorbing so much pressure. It's hard for the Spartans, as we see here, to really gain possession of the ball when they look to advance it. They're going to have to find a way, when they win it in their own third of the field, to advance it up to the middle and even higher to Mutatu and George up top. Miller over to Mutatu. Had George available. Reagan came back. Chris Monroe, I think it was important off the top when Shaka Daly told us the news. Obviously, it was tough because Verdi's been so good. But he also said, you know what, the back four, then Ibarra in front of him, certainly makes me feel pretty good about who's ever in there. Giving up 12 goals on the season, only three in conference play, with two of those being penalty kicks. So one from the run of play, and arguably one of the toughest conferences in the entire country. So if a freshman was going to have to step in to such a situation, he's got to feel pretty good with that D in front of him. Mohamed Saki's into the game, and I think he's offside. This young man has been hampered all year by injuries, and he is dangerous. Nice job here by Tejas to slot Zaki in just a bit offside, unable to hold his run, and then subsequently put it on frame, but a nice impact from the substitute. Muhammad Zaki. Zaki's got tremendous size, six foot one, 180 pound junior, wearing the number nine jersey. When you start thinking about his, his health gets better and he's ready for the Big Ten tournament, the NCAA tournament. You got Zaki Popovich, Hallahan, Umar Farouk, Osman as your attacking players. Broche, Puselli off the bench, they are loaded. And with young and returning players alike, they do have the depth to make some noise if they can make it into the tournament later this year. And Wally, all the way through, Harrison. Reads it. It'll be a throw in Michigan here at Michigan Soccer Stadium. There's Muhammad Zaki. Just has not been able to stay healthy this season. And even last year, not able to get a consistent run. Nielsen. back from Michigan State, Woodruff on one side, Stone on the other. No Michael Watungu. Nick Woodruff, redshirt sophomore. Hunter Morse has made world-class saves this year, then he's also Unfortunately, been involved in situations where a defensive lapse, under commitment maybe, coming out, and he's had to pick some out of the back of the net. And that's what you experience when you're a first-year player in the Big Ten Conference. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have situations in which your teammates don't bail you out. But he's responded well, and Coach Rensing likes him. Farai Mutatu sends it over. Sternberg deflected. It's one nothing Michigan. This is how it happened. Off the corner kick from Ibarra, the tri-captain, getting to the back post for Broach with the knockdown. Pinball action in the middle of the goal with Popovich knocking it in for his ninth of the season. Popovich, last year at Oakland, has 15 of the 23 goals this season scored in the second half. It's their first goal, as we told you earlier, since Popovich scored against Rutgers, their first goal in the first half, that is. Popovich coming off a season at Oakland last year. He had six goals and seven assists. 
the year before, four goals and six assists. So saving his best for last, for sure. There you go, but I'm sure Coach Daly can appreciate the fact they didn't have to wait that long for him to get on the score sheet today in this interstate derby. For Hallahan, Nielsen running the show as the center back in this three-back system. Yeah, you think about Damon Rensing and just all these devastating injuries. Both Nielsen and Watunga, and Watunga can't go today, they were out, and when they came back, they were on restricted minutes. So Michigan State, with them back in there, they'd be humming along, humming along, restricted minutes, they'd have to pull them. And then it felt like, and even if it wasn't, it felt like almost immediately, Michigan State would give up a goal the minute that one of those two were out. Down goes one, down goes the other. Very unfair if you are Damon Rensing, but unfortunately a tough reality here in this compact fall season. Hallahan. Tejas, now Harrison, Ibarra, game for Popovich, Ibarra stays with it. Ibarra, one of those important blue players, piano carrier, all the cliches, they fit for Mark Ibarra. Hallahan, bends one to Popovich, Saki. Player down for Michigan State. Collision there with Popovich. I think Stone, but we'll confirm it. Nebosha Popovich, the grad transfer from Oakland, who's got the goal in this one. Unfortunately, speaking of injuries, look like we might have a head-on-head -head collision between the defender and Popovich. Yeah, it just looks like he caught Popovich in the back of the head with his forehead. Concussion protocol obviously going to be observed here with 12 minutes left in the first. Nick Woodruff, who's got a yellow card, the six foot two, 185 pound sophomore from the state of Massachusetts, Bishop Fian High School, as Popovich. Osha Popovich leads the Big Ten in points, leads the Big Ten in goals, and he is part of our State Farm State of Success with Aaron Malloy, the only Big Ten men's soccer player to be listed on the NCAA senior class list, which shows he gets it done on the field and off. Two senior leaders for each squad, even with Popovich being a grad transfer, making his impact felt on this already potent Wolverine attack all season long. Malloy actually got the second assist, so they are dead even at 21 points. Aaron Malloy and this man here have featured prominently tonight on the Big Ten Network, that's for sure. Big games all season long, especially in the month of October as we head in to this final run before the conference tournament. Good fair play right there. Popovich and Woodruff with a handshake. As the smart one here talking about the concussion protocol. They both had to get the clearance and now they're back in. Now we're back in it with Michigan State playing short but looking to then play long through Nielsen. A little bit more accurate distribution compared to Morris playing out of the back. But unfortunately for the Spartans, just not able to sustain any level of market possession throughout this first half. The ultras loud and proud tonight cheering on Michigan as they're trying to get that big bear back. They held the big bear. The only time Michigan's ever had it two consecutive years was 2014 and 15 as that'll roll out of bounds. Stay with us at halftime because we'll roll back to 2014, that 3-2 thriller. Tyler Arnone, Salamani, Colin McAtee, answering goals from Adam Montague and Jay Chapman. And Chapman still playing for Toronto FC. Those are some great names right there. Trip down memory lane, making us all feel old as we go see all of the past, all Big Ten performers still making an impact in the league. Umar Farouk Osman, under 11 minutes. Trying to find Tejas. Kept alive by Ibarra, Nielsen. Well done by Nielsen to find Aganwale. 
part of the reason the Spartans haven't been able to sustain as much possession as they would like is they're just not able to find Mutatu or George up top with that outlet pass. It's difficult for them. Michigan, as we said, three goals conceded, all conference play long, and Ibarra sitting in front of them. They just got to find a way to advance that ball. Popovich, good weight on this ball to Hallahan. Hallahan tries to get it back on his left foot. Sternberg knew that. Hallahan stays with it. Hallahan in. Hallahan, he can hit it here with his right to cross it. Not a whole lot of mustard on it. Now his left, Nielsen. It'll fall top of the 18. Tejas kept alive. Umar Farouk Osman trying to ride a little mini bike there, but didn't touch it. Now Mohamed Zaki looking for Osman. Popovich is there. And finally cleared out by Woodruff. Here come the Michigan Wolverines. Even with five, sometimes seven defenders, the Spartans have been absorbing pressure all half long. Hallahan making magic through his dance moves, getting some service into the box for the dangerous attack for the Wolverines. Well said, Dancy with his left foot and his right foot, Mr. Hallahan. Fans are right on top of you here, folks. When the ultras roll in, they literally can pat you on the back as you're doing a throw-in. Swike right in front of the ultras. It's as soccer should be with the fans this close to the players. Very special. Very fun, especially if you're a Spartan. You gotta love the idea about another school's fans just heckling you and telling you how much you stink <laughs> all game long. Logan Wally. Exhibit A right there. There you go. Alongside former Indiana goalkeeper Chris Monroe, I'm Dean Linky. Delighted to be with you here for the 20th annual Battle of the Big Bear. As I told you earlier, stay with us at halftime. We'll go. The full breakdown of how this game was created by the former coach of Michigan, Steve Burns. Ogan Wally hits it hard. Jack Hallahan, last year's Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, special player. He might not have the stats this season due to a number of new threats on the front line, but he's still able to work his magic. Getting past Sterenberg here, it's got to be brutal when you know he's going left, you know he's going to make these moves, and you still can't stop him. His tenacity, staying with the play, getting in a service, creating a dangerous opportunity for the Wolverines. See the 3.38 shots per game this season for Hallahan. As Michigan State now going to go to their very much depleted bench. Gianni Ferry, who had that brilliant assist to Pimlot to score against Maryland. And Ferry will come into the game for his first Big Bear action, the freshman for the freshman, George. So both get a taste here in the first half. Michigan looking for more, and they got more. Popovich has a brace, and it's 2-0 Michigan. Well, we hear the Ultras celebrating, and rightfully so, coming off of an unfortunate turnover from Miller and the Michigan State Spartans. We're able to see here as Harrison advances it, Michigan State coming back into possession, but unfortunately for Coach Damon Rensing, Ibarra doing a great job taking it off of Miller's foot, Popovich putting it low into the corner, and Morris just unable to stretch and get it outside his right post. Great effort there by Popovich, low with pace into the corner, Morse only able to get a fingertip and not steer it wide. Popovich, second goal tonight, leads the Big Ten in double digits. And the grad student transfer from Oakland, a force here. His first taste of the Big Bear, and he loves it. He got tired scoring against Michigan as a member of Oakland, and now he's doing <laughs> it to the Michigan State Spartans as a Wolverine. Jack Hallahan. Michigan State, they were going to start Dante Morissette. 
as part of a four-back system, but he got injured in practice, and so he couldn't go, so that's why they had to change it to a 3-5-2. Beck comes in hard, but kept alive. Swipe pushes forward, back across. Zaki was open, flag was up anyway. He was offside, so even if he did finish, I think they were gonna pull it back. Though offsides, we're still seeing Michigan get involved even more in the attack. Osman with the firm cross, but Zaki unable to finish it. Obviously wouldn't have count with the offsides call, but exciting if you're a Wolverine fan to see what they've been able to do this 40 minutes. Check that out. Michigan, normally not a fast starting team. Last eight matches, they were looking at zeros at the half. Tonight, Popovich has two already. And they're thinking about what they might be doing with that big bear to finally get it back in Ann Arbor. They still got a lot of work to do. A Damon Renzi team, no matter how many injuries they have, they'll have some answers in the second half, folks. I can assure you that. Hallahan. Stumble over it. They'll whistle that against Jack back. It'll be a dangerous free kick opportunity for the Michigan Wolverines who lead it two to nothing. Story of the half so far, mentioning Jack Hallahan's name in the attacking third of the field, able to secure the ball, doing yet another bit of fancy footwork to draw the foul and a dangerous free kick opportunity. Hunter Moore's barking out details. Hallahan, that cultured left foot. And Morris, just for safety, has got to knock it over as Hallahan almost sent this one in all by himself. Why not? Creating for some of his teammates. Let's see if we can put one on frame. Better safe than sorry if you're Hunter Morse. But yet again out for a dangerous corner kick situation. So now Zaki Popovich, Tejas, and this great left foot of Hallahan. Hallahan sent in. Good ball. Still lose Zaki. Off the post. Mohamed Zaki. So unlucky. Battling all those injuries. He had a sitter early, but he was offside. This one, without the post, it's 3-0 Michigan with the post still just 2-0. Just like on the first goal, Michigan State unable to clear that first cross, bouncing in the box. Zachy turning on his left foot just centimeters away from putting it in the back of the net. Coach Damon Rensing is going to want to make sure his defense shores up on those opportunities. Great effort there by Zaki, trying to put it on frame. Oh, a goal for Muhammad Zaki would mean so much. I can tell you that. The junior from Ghana, part of the Dreamers Soccer Academy, economics major. He's got two goals this year already in just three starts. This is only his sixth game of the season. He had two goals last year in 15 games. Six goals and four assists his freshman year when you had Francis Atuaheni, Mohamed Zaki, and Umar Farouk Osman running around for Michigan. Talk about talent, and what Coach Shaka Daly loves to see is that as his attacking talent has evolved, as he's graduated certain players, and guys like Osman and Hallahan have stepped up even more, his defense has grown along with it, and he has such a balanced team here in this 2019 campaign. So we can tell you that Samake, the senior from Canada, got a yellow card. So now there's been three yellow cards issued. Both center backs for Michigan. And then one of the backs for Michigan State, Woodruff, with the other yellow card as the referee has been pretty consistent. You do something not quite up to snuff, he's been issuing cards. He's been pretty fair and balanced letting the guys play, but if they get out in any way, shape, or form a dangerous foul, he's quick to uh, quick to show those cards. Well, Chris Monroe, if Michigan State can figure some things out at halftime with Damon Rensing, Remember that Zaki shot and that post, because if they can pull one back early in the second half, that'll be huge, 2-1 as opposed to 3-1, obviously. Absolutely, and I think one thing Coach Damon Rensing is going to have to do is consider maybe changing up formations or switching personnel, even with a depleted roster. He's absorbed so much pressure in this 3-5-2 or 5-3-2 system 
been unable to connect with the forwards. They look a little shell-shocked, so expect him to calm the troops down, try to regroup at halftime, and put his team in the best position to succeed in the second half. Hunter Morse has seen a lot here in these first 43 minutes. Looked like a foul there from Nielsen. Referee will play advantage. It'll fall. Buka's come into the game. Logan Wally hard tackle, one back by Buka. Hallahan has gone the distance. Hallahan trying to bend one. He wasn't on target there, but let me tell you folks, he can put that on target from that distance. And again, you love to see it if you're a Michigan fan, getting the ball in his favorite left foot, whether he's dribbling past defenders, making dangerous balls through to the forwards or looking to put it on frame. He's a triple threat that showed all of his characteristics in this first half. Little flick from Hallahan, pushing it forward. Michigan making some changes as they've got Muhammad Zaki now as the center forward with Popovich coming to the bench for the final three minutes he was subbed in. Miller, you're right, we've not even been able to say Michael Miller's name or Michael Pimlot's name a ton. That means Michigan has controlled most of this first 45. More bodies in the center of the park and their ability to play well on the counter and possess when counter attacking has really meant that Michigan State's midfield hasn't been able to get into this game in the first 44 minutes. Nielsen. Sternberg. Michigan State, final 20 seconds. Samake clearance to Hallahan. Look at that trap from Hallahan. What even intended for him. He still is able to bring it down so neatly. As the seconds count down, Michigan out shooting the Spartans 4 0 in the final eight minutes. And of course, two goals. First two goal lead in this series since 2010. 2010, a magical year for Michigan as they went to the College Cup under then coach Steve Burns who started this big bear battle. Hunter Morse, he saw a whole lot of shots there in the first 45. Great work from the Wolverines, testing Hunter Morse and the Spartan defense, able to possess quite well throughout the entire first half. As we said, we'll have to see what Coach Damon Renzing has up his sleeve to see if they can make it more of a battle in the second half. Michigan State decimated by injuries. We're joined by their fine head coach, Damon Rensing. In this battle of the Big Bear, Damon, with all the injuries, Michigan at home, they brought a lot of weapons in that first 45, Coach. Yeah, I'm not worried about our injuries at all. Um, we were ready to go. The team was actually playing well. I mean, it was, a, it was a restart and a giveaway in midfield is what led to the two goals. Um, and we got ourselves into a, some, a couple decent moments. Certainly when it went 2-0, they were feeling it and put some pressure. But I thought we actually managed things outside of a couple important moments. And we, you can't do that in, in, in this game. In terms of finding Mutatu and George up top, anything you're going to tell the guys to look to get more distribution up to them and subsequent possession? Yeah, just a little quicker, I think, in, uh, in transition. Just get it into their feet, especially with Samaki on a, on a yellow card. Um, we got to step our lines up in the back when we do clear it so that we can win the second ball and then play it forward into uh, into Matatu, George, Gianni, whoever it is. Damon, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Go green. Damon Renzi, never any excuses. The Big Bear is on the line. Popovich with two goals in Michigan trying to take the Big Bear back. Leads to nothing. The Michigan Wolverines lead the Michigan State Spartans by a score of two to nothing here at halftime. University of Michigan Soccer Stadium. We've got more great soccer coming up on Sunday on BTN as the regular season concludes. As the Hoosiers and Spartans battle it out with a lot at stake. Big Ten men's soccer Sunday at 3 Eastern 
on BTN and the Fox Sports app. We'll see what kind of response Damon Rensing's Michigan State Spartans have to try to keep the Big Bear back in East Lansing where it's been the last three years. Michael Pimlot wearing number five just to the left there of Hunter Morse has held it every year. Meanwhile, Michigan, boy, they really did a great job because their freshman goalkeeper making his debut, Owen Finnerty, we didn't say his name after the open. I'm pretty sure he had one ball played back to him that he cleared about 60 yards. And other than that, not sure he touched it other than a couple of goal kicks. So if you're Coach Shaka Daly, you love the fact that your defense has done what it's done all year in terms of giving up only 12 goals, three in conference, one from the run of play. Nice, easy way to make that transition for the freshman keeper. Michigan Wolverines. As we're waiting to talk to their top man, Shaka Daly, getting ready to put the headset on. And Shaka, great environment, battle of the Big Bear, nice first 45 for your team. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, we scored a scrappy goal for a change, which I think was was good, good positive start for us. But uh, they had their little bit of share of it. We struggled a little bit with the 3-5-2 for a period with their two forwards. But hopefully we sorted it out here at halftime. We know two is not enough. Michigan State's very resilient. They're hardworking. Uh, Coach Rensing will, will push them to their limits, so hopefully we can uh, we can get out of here with a result. Would you just give a comment on Marky Barr and not just how he's played this game, but what he means to your program and this team? Yeah, different class. You know, very, very good player, good connector, very composed, good good player. So we're fortunate to, uh, to have him. Hopefully he uh, keeps it going here in the second half. Great college soccer matchup, Shaka. Always a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, gentlemen. Have a great night. Shaka Daly leaving his alma mater, Providence, when he got the call to come to Ann Arbor. Think about that. You played at Providence, you're coaching at Providence, and then Michigan calls and says, we want you to be our head coach. We want you to be the second coach in our program's history. It's a tough one to turn down, and he's really built on what former coach Steve Burns did to build that program up and then look to take it to another level under Daly's leadership. Out of bounds, quick throw, Rai Mutatu. Connor George back out there. Mutatu will earn a throw in for Michigan State. of the Big Bear. First three went to Michigan State, and then Steve Burns got that win in 2003 in East Lansing, just down the road from where he grew up, as Coach Burns telling us that he could have gone to Michigan State to play for Joe Baum. Then his mom said, if you stay at Michigan State, you're going to have to live at home. And boom, he was gone. He was at Ann Arbor the next day. Sometimes <laughs> it's just that simple. Love you, Mom. <laughs> Throw in. Coach Burns did say, though, like from 2004 to 2009, Michigan State won five and tied one. And he actually told me this week that he took responsibility. He said the big bear that he found, you heard the story driving home in ironically Wolverine, Michigan. He put so much pressure on himself that he felt like it trickled down to his players and he held himself accountable for hoisting that big bear up and putting too much pressure on his team. That's the sign of being a good coach, taking responsibility if and when you make a little bit of a mistake. And what's interesting is talking to Coach Shaka Daly this week, he said part of his responsibility was to obviously make sure that his players understand this is a big interstate rivalry but they're playing for more than this they're playing for a spot in the ncaa tournament conference tournament seating etc so he's making sure he wants his players to know that there's a big picture as well as the near-term impact of this rivalry well said steve burns now running the Violet. university of michigan alumni association and their fundraising development i can't think of a better person to do it man who has so much pride 
in the maze in blue. His daughter was a key member of the Michigan rowing team that won the Big Ten title last year in Wisconsin. And Steve Burns, he's the kind of guy that I used to say could turn Woody Hayes into a Michigan fan. That is how much he believes in Michigan. That's a lot of passion. <laughs> Steve Burns had some great players in 2010, including Justin Merrim. This was just a few weeks ago. His mom and dad now live in Atlanta. The whole family's there. That's Kate. She won the rowing title. Justin Merrim, part of both goals as Pimlot takes that shot. After the game, Burns is holding the Michigan scarf up. Justin Merrim finds him, takes off his jersey, tosses it up, and says, that goes to my coach. That means you got great respect for your former coach. Classy gesture from White, the Big Ten legend, and Justin Miram. Great to hear and great to see. Michigan State, just as Shaka Daly told us they would, he said Damon Renzi will have an answer. And Michigan State trying to pull one back, sent in, looking for Matatu. Top of the 18, Muhammad Zaki. And now Umar Farouk Osman will send it long. Michigan. In possession, Umar Farouk Osman. And Hunter Morris with the collision there. Muhammad Zaki will run into Hunter Morris. And Woodruff's already got that yellow card. He's got to be careful. Muhammad Zaki. Great work by Pacelli to hold the ball up, find the streaking Osman who puts in a dangerous ball into the six. Hunter Morris coming out and making sure Zaki knows that he's there and he's not going to drop the ball on that cross. Mike Studd, the man in the middle, the referee who right away when Woodruff did something just semi-questionable, he brought out the card, brought it back for Samake, and he's been consistent. That's all you can ask for, not to uh, not to hope that the referee is getting too involved in the game, making it about him, etc. I'm thinking of you, Mike Dean, in the English Premier League. Uh, done a nice job in being consistent all the way around. Alongside Chris Monroe, Dean Linky, great to be at the University of Michigan Soccer Stadium for this in-state rivalry. It's got a little extra mojo. Thanks to Steve Burns and Joe Baum with the Big Bear. And we talked about Michigan's attacking options in the first half. Think how blessed they are to be able to start the second half here with Zaki on the field and Puselli giving Popovich their 10 goal scorer a rest in addition to Broach, who has four goals on the season himself. It's just a wealth of options for Coach Shaka Daly and this Wolverine team. Pimlot. Pimlot had the assist to Beck in that 1-1 tie last October 23rd in East Lansing to keep the Big Bear with Michigan State. Open Wally. Mar Farouk Osman. Some folks talking about him being an outside back at the next level, reminding you a little bit of the Beasley brothers. Not big on frame, but We've seen Shaka Daly move Umar Farouk Osman back to left back at times. And he has the willingness and the fight to get up and down the line, make those 100-yard runs to and fro. And so that's the reason he's able to play multiple positions in Shaka Daly's lineup. Mohamed Zaki. Miller. Michigan's done a nice job keeping an eye on Miller because when Miller and Pimlot get going in rhythm, they are dangerous. Exactly. Damon Rensing likes Miller's ability to switch the ball from Let's east run. to west. They want to try to find it early. And one thing we're seeing here, even with that misplaced ball, Michigan State growing into the game a little bit in their 3 5 2 slash 5 3 2 system, doing a better job of possessing in Michigan's defensive half of the field. And here is Miller, Mutatu, Mutatu, swike on him, Mutatu, head down near the end lines, try to send it across, cleared out of there by Reagan. For 
Rai Mutatu. He has scored some stunning goals the last couple years. Who could forget that thriller of a goal last year at College Park? This Michigan team building from the back, forcing Nielsen to clear it out. It'll be a throw in for Michigan. Love that question about Mark Ibarra because gone from that team a year ago as Ibarra is back is the baby face assassin Robbie Mertz and Evo Serta. But because you put Popovich in and because Ibarra is such, does such a great job connecting the defensive line to the attacking line, those are big losses, but Michigan reinforcements still has a great attack. That's exactly right, Dean. His ability to connect the ball east and west, just like we said Miller does, but also play well with left center back Jackson Reagan and bring the ball into the attack means that though they lost some of those guys in the spine of the team, Michigan's obviously been able to reload, and it has them here comfortably 2 nothing of front. How about Shaka's response? Just plain simple, touch of class in describing Ibarra. Sometimes less is more, and no further words are needed to describe this tri-captain here for the Wolverines. Eight assists on the season, the most in the Big Ten for number 23. Here's Miller for the Spartans. Nielsen. Stone. Sternberg. The plan was for Sternberg to move over to the right side as he is a right-footed player playing all season on the left side. But when Morissette went down, they had to reconfigure things and bring him back over to the left side as a left-sided wing back. And Ogunwale as well has been quiet. He's been playing on this right side of defense in that sort of wing back situation. Damon Rensing said earlier in the week he likes to play him higher. He wants to play him in a right mid or left mid capacity. But due to the injuries, due to the formation chain, he's taking his new role. He's playing with it. And as we've seen, the Spartans are starting to grow into this game here in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Wally, Nielsen, Woodruff, good ball over, shot from distance, George! Finnerty was frozen, and Finnerty's got a new best friend known as the Post. We saw a post in the first half for the Michigan team. Here we see a bomb from 25 yards out. Nothing Finnerty would have been able to do due to the deflection, but we see it out for a Spartan corner kick. Owen Finnerty making his debut. Frozen because of the deflection, set across over the head of Pimlot, finding Woodruff. Clearance not totally there, and now a whistle going against Michigan State. Great job there by the Spartans on the initial play to get in between the lines. But what I mean by that is find the forward in between, in front of the back line and right behind Ibarra. The ball played in, split the two of them. They were able to find the attacking player and put the shot on frame out for the corner. So Owen Finnerty in for Andrew Verdi, who Suffered an injury against Wisconsin. Matatu, ooh, right at the top of the 18. The feet go out, but the ball doesn't as Finnerty tested there by Mutatu. If I'm Coach Shaka Daly, that's what I'm most happy to see. He was connected with his back line. He came out aggressively. He obviously didn't put the ball out past the 18-yard box, but he came confidently right at the feet of Mutatu. You've got to feel good about your freshman keeper making a play like that. Michigan State, they had three first half shots, but they've got two shots in the first 11 minutes of this half. Responding to the very positive attitude of Damon Rensing, who wanted nothing to do with my injury excuse thing, which is legitimate when you look at the mass unit that they have, but he does not buying it. Certainly, and I made a comment in the first half, maybe he considers switching formations or doing something different, but he was very candid. We just have to play a little bit quicker, 
We have opportunities to possess in their half. And in the first 12 minutes, they've been able to do so, get a couple of opportunities. And I think that just means there's a reason he's a coach. And we're here commenting on the game. <laughs> Here's Ibarra. Zaki. Muhammad Zaki's a bright light when he's healthy. Into the 18, back across. Tejas, they continue to battle. Shot by Zaki. Finally cleared out of there. That was Kevin Buka wearing number 19, the little man who did it all by himself. He was dangerous. What impressed me most, not just was the run into the box, but the swift cut from his right onto his left foot. Great opportunity there for the Wolverines and an even bigger stop by Morse in the Spartan neck. Hoselli, who came on late in the first half, this is Buka. Brilliant through ball by the outside back, but the nice cut by Buka onto his left. Morse standing tall, getting a big palm breaking it away and then Zaki unable to connect with the first time follow weapons continue to come out there for Michigan two saves for Morse as he leads the Big Ten just one under 70 the next one will be number 70 as over the ball is Ibarra Ibarra eight assists looking for nine falls in drops and cleared by Michigan State George Buka on the mark. Sternberg, perhaps too casual. Mohamed Zaki. Sternberg did well to get a piece of it to win it back. And there's Sternberg pushing it forward, looking for Matatu. Samake to Buka. Think about Michigan coming back out here with this 2 0 lead, and they still have Hallahan and Popovich on the bench and i think we'll probably see shaka daly go to his bench here in the next five or ten they've done a nice job of building the ball building play but he might like to see a little bit more possession coming through hallahan and popovich here as the second half progresses off of mutatu there's shaka daly tommy McBenemy has been by his side the entire time since arriving from providence Johan Obando, who was a great goalkeeper for him at Providence, also part of the staff, along with Justin McCarr and Val Anderson. Carlos Tellez, Jr. from Hollywood, Florida. With a Hollywood headband right there. Yeah, he always has that headband on. You can always find Tellez, and there it is. The season started, he was not part of the first 11. But of late, he has been the man to go in there with Ibarra. And part of the reason for that is because with the four front runners, let's say, Osman, Hallahan, Popovich, and then Broche Puselli, he's able to sit in with Ibarra, protect that back line like Ibarra does, and make sure that they're able to possess as well as get into the attack. Ibarra. Pimlot winning that. Marfruk Osman finding Ibarra. Now Swipe. Swipe finds Tellez. Tellez. Harrison. Buka. Tellez. Buka behind him. And wanted the foul and said they'll just get the throw in. It'll be Harrison. Tejas doing a nice job, as we said, moving the ball east to west, getting the wide attackers involved in the play while also advancing the ball into Michigan State territory. Tejas gets it back to Buka. Buka turns with it. Umar Farouk Osman was lurking at the top of the 18, but Buka's feeling it. Nice job there, strong hold up play by Tejas. Buka with the smart, educated left footed ball into the back post. Zaki doing a nice job of banging in there with Woodruff, unable to connect with that cross. I like the extended run though for Muhammad Zaki and just as Chris Monroe had told you, Shaka Daly getting ready to bring on the Big Ten's leading goal scorer. He's got two in this game, Nabosha Popovich as Popovich 
is in the game. The grad student wearing number 33 from Rochester Hills, Michigan. Hunter Morse. We've discussed the added pressure of the Big Bear, and look, because of that, if Michigan State, with the positive reinforcement from Damon Retzing, if they can somehow scratch a goal here before it gets under 10 minutes, that emotion will be raw out there as they try to equalize. Well, they'll feel like they're right in this thing, which they would be, and what's nice when you're on the road going against this vicious Michigan Ultra crowd, you're going to shut them up, and you're gonna put yourself in a position where a set piece, where a free kick, corner kick, might give you the opportunity to sneak one and take it to overtime. Back. Here we go, Miller. Oh, and his touch got away from him as it looked like he was gonna be able to get on the inside shoulder of Samake. And back is taken down there by Buka. Buka thinks he's diving, the referee says no. Michigan State will restart it. But great work there by the Spartans to get it going from east to west, and then when they lost it, Miller's touch might not have been the best, but three guys were able to swarm on the ball, get it back, and set themselves up for a dangerous free kick. Spartans trying to pull one back. Finnerty has got it. So Finnerty. Frozen on that deflection, but the post got a good bounce to keep this one at 2 0. So, both goalkeepers, and you're a former goalkeeper at Indiana, it's kind of a ritual, right, to recognize the posts and the crossbar? Yes, and to say your prayers if you're a religious person <laughs> or even if you're not religious. I mean, hey, what, what, what the heck? Uh, but no, I, I think both goalies have benefited from the post. Zachy in the first half and then obviously in the second half with the shot on frame behind Finnerty. But again, uh, as we saw a minute ago, Finnerty coming out for that cross and the free kick. All you can do is play what's in front of you. Came out aggressive, took the ball off of somebody's head. Shaka Daly, first real minutes for this goalkeeper, doing a nice job stabilizing this back line in front of his vaunted back four defense. We'll see if Sternberg can test Finnerty. We mentioned part of the U.S. under 18 youth national team program. Also, he's got good feet. He was part of the U.S. under 16 futsal team. And as you know, that's a whole different game. I'm like, that's a completely different sport. <laughs> the fact that he can do both is beyond astounding. Good job, kid. So the clock is stopped as we've got a shoestring situation going on for Tejas. Indiana, by the way, leading the Buckeyes four to nothing as Bezerra's got two goals and Penn has two goals. As Indiana and Penn State. Penn State, what a big time win over Maryland. Coming from behind at home down to Marfaruk Osman goes down. 20th edition of the Big Bear. We showed you the 2014 and 17 game. How about in 2010, that year that Michigan went to the College Cup, that was another thriller. Went to overtime. Justin Merrim, who we showed playing for Atlanta, scored. Latif Alashe, whose brother Fatai played for Michigan State. Then Dominic Baroni, of course, all the Baroni brothers played for Michigan State. He scored two to tie it in the 85th minute, but then in the 99th minute, Hamoudi Saad, whose brother Sunni had an assist earlier, got one from Latif Alashe to win it, and then Michigan would roll on, they'd win the Big Ten tournament and go all the way to the College Cup. I'm just beyond surprised that a Big Bear game was a close one. This is, uh, <laughs> it, it seems to be the, the theme of the last 19 matchups here between Michigan and Michigan State. Coach Daly with some instruction there for Buka, who was dangerous. And now Jack Hallahan will come on 
Cody Sweet in for Mutatu. Sweet has started a ton of games in his final year for Damon Renzi. Muhammad Zaki, little move, Zaki, Zaki, little Tato! What a save from Morse. Zaki didn't get a whole lot on it, but it almost got by Morse. The footwork just to get in that position was incredible. Zaki earning extra minutes right now with his work rate as he tracks back sliding tackle. Mark, stay out of that, Mark! 11 shots for Michigan, five for Michigan State. As we see here off the Spartan turnover, Tejas finding Zaki, who has one thing on his mind, attacking the goal. Quick feet, just unable to get it past Morse, who sprawls out with the big left paw to make the save. Zaki again. Zaki finding Hallahan. Sternberg on the mark. Hallahan circling off of Nielsen. Corner kick, corner kick, Michigan. We've seen in the last five minutes as Popovich has come into the game, as well as Hallahan. Zaki able to get more involved, less reliant on possessing, and more able to do his dancing and find pockets of space to attack. Third corner for Michigan. Hallahan trying to find Zaki. Little touch here, Harrison! Off the post, Hunter Morse. Not happy with his back line, and Joel Harrison, the Canadian, wearing the captain's armband, almost made it 3 nothing Michigan. Well, I was initially about to comment, and the ball back into the box seemed like a perfect counterattack ball for the Spartans. Made its way right through. Harrison on his favored right foot. Yet again, Morse being saved by that right post. Joel Harrison. Keep talking about these injuries. Last two years, barely could find his way on the field. Shaka Daly kept telling us, I got this Canadian kid. He's legit, big time player. He wasn't kidding. No, not at all. He loves his ability to not only do the 1v1 defending and dirty work that a defender is supposed to, but get up into the attack, both with his dribble and the ability to combine with his passing skills. Callahan with the spin, taken down there by Beck. Chris Monroe, as you start to think about Michigan, and there's still plenty of time for Michigan State, so hang on, Sparty fans, but right now Michigan up 2 nothing. You think about Zaki getting healthy. You think about Hallahan getting healthy. Here's Osman. Osman will cross it, looking for Zaki. Cleared out of there. And Harrison healthy. Michigan putting it together here late in the season. Certainly you don't want to jinx anyone when it comes to these sort of things, but the fact that they've had such a stout defense all season long, 12 goals given up, three in conference play, one from the run of play, combined with their attacking players getting healthy, means that if everybody can stay that way, they're in a great possession moving into November. Long clearance for Michigan State. Having said all of that, at 20 minutes and 40 seconds, it's still just a two-goal game. If they can find George or perhaps Ferry off the bench, you know Matatu's going to get back in there. You just never know. And again, with all this talk of Michigan, it's important to remember Michigan State, with only their three wins on the season, all three of those have come in conference play. Michigan State is actually higher in the standings right now. So yet another way this Big Bear match carries an important significance to each side. On point, Chris Monroe, Ibarra, looking for Zaki, Popovich. Zaki, flag is down, Zaki! Wrong side of the netting, Muhammad Zaki slamming his hand down. This young man has been so close to getting a goal. Brilliant switch of attack by Ibarra. Popovich with the educated ball over the top. Zaki with the tight angle, all he could do to try to put it on frame. But again, as you see him get more involved in the game, get healthier, get more acclimated to the college game and the pace, he's going to put himself in these sort of positions where he can crack that and make sure he gets his first goal of the year. Now under 20 minutes remaining. Reagan. Mar Farouk Osman, Austin Swipe. The ball swipe. Those few times where the Big Bear crossed over with the Alashe brothers, 
that was something amazing to go. And they both were impact players, as you know. I mean, Latifa Lashi was great. Fatia Lashi's still in the pros. No, no slouch either. The two of them had enough talent to feed a family of six, not just the two of them. Uh, but it's just a testament, again, to the strength of the Big Ten, all the programs, and the type of talent uh, and, and pro prospects that this conference can create. Rai Mutatu is going to come back into the game. There he is, in for George. Mutatu, game-changing pace. Nielsen. Turnover by back, Hallahan. Hallahan! Takes a shot from distance. We have seen that result in goals for Michigan. Another turnover in the Michigan State half of the field. Hallahan yet again driving onto his left foot, looking to put it on frame, but just a bit outside the Spartan goal. Jack Hallahan. Zachy finally coming out as Derek Broach will come on. I gotta believe the coaching staff super proud of the effort Muhammad Zaki put in just his sixth game of the season. Absolutely, and the fact that he's been able to come on, provide a spark, be dangerous in the attacking third of the field when you already have a Popovich, when you have a Hallahan, when you have an Osman, it's just another weapon for Coach Shaka Daly as we head into November. Swike had the assist to Cleet Key in the 1-1 tie a year ago. Cleet Key graduating along with goalkeeper Henry Mashburn, Daniel Makuna, center back, Evo Serta, Marcelo Bogus, and Robbie Mertz. Sixteen minutes left. We're looking to see Michigan State step a little bit and press those Michigan defenders. Coach Damon Rensick mentioned it at halftime. He wants to see his defenders get a little bit up further into the attack, making that distance between the fours and the defenders that much smaller. It's 9.45 here in Ann Arbor on the East Coast, and the Ultras are not going anywhere. They are staying for the finish to this one as Nielsen it out of there to Miller. Woodruff. Handled there by Reagan. Popovich has got both goals. Umar Farouk Osman, Nielsen sliding in, corner kick, corner kick Michigan. Great work there by Popovich to hold up the ball, withstand the pressure from the Michigan State defender, turn even though he was being fouled, and then the ref did a nice job of letting play continue, as we see here, setting up for another Michigan corner. Bosha Popovich adding to the Big Bear highlight reel in his first Big Bear game. Mark Ibarra grew up in Ann Arbor, went to Ann Arbor, member of the Michigan men's soccer team. Ibarra looking for Reagan. Tejas, Tejas going to drop it. Hallahan. Well, if it's going to come out to somebody outside the box, outside a corner kick, you've got to like your chances if it's Jack Hallahan, especially on his favorite left foot. Nice job again by the Wolverines of winning the first ball. Spartans unable to get it too far out there. And Hallahan on the left foot just came up a little bit right before he struck it, leading to it going over the bar. 
Michigan Wolverines have seen Michigan State take the Big Bear the last three years. The only time Michigan has held it for more than one year was 2014 and 15. George is back in the game for Sweet for Michigan State. You mentioned trying to pull one back before the 10 minute mark. to Morse. George to Miller. Sternberg. Harrison has it taken away by Sternberg. Mutatu as Reagan came in. As we've said, though, the Spartans doing a nice job of looking to possess. Mutatu attempting to shield off Reagan, unable to do so without committing the foul. Some good eyes there by the referee to spot that. Sternberg. The ultras, as Chris Monroe told you, Give you an education. Sterenberg getting in the mix, taking on Hallahan, letting Hallahan know he did not appreciate the fact that he went to ground. However, that being said, I do think he connected with his ankle. Therefore, the foul was justified. So Alex Sterenberg's going to get a card, the redshirt sophomore from Boston, went to Westwood High School. Michigan State, 13 fouls to eight for Michigan. Michigan looking to kill the game here. 12 minutes left. You don't want to take your foot off the pedal. The best way to do that is going to be to possess in Michigan State's half. If they can find the ball here, switch it east to west, or even get a chance on frame, it'll really increase their likelihood of getting out of here and getting that Big Bear trophy. Mar Farouk Osman, his touch lets him down, but Michigan wins it back. Broach. Umar Farouk Osman, Olu Ogunwale. Ogunwale comes across Umar Farouk Osman. It'll be a foul on Michigan State. Osman lost the initial ball, did a nice job here of making Ogunwale dive in, who's forced to foul to keep him from heading down to the end line. Now Ibarra, he's got those eight assists. Keep an eye on Reagan, 25, slashing to the near post. We'll see if Ibarra can get it not only over the wall, but those first couple of Spartan defenders right around that PK spot. Ibarra, far side, punched out by Morse. Broach has Hallahan. He'll use Hallahan. Hallahan on his left foot. Chips it in, little flick. No problem for Hunter Morse. Indiana will move to six and one with 18 points. Penn State will move to five, one and one with 16. If this scoreline holds, Michigan will climb up to 12 points, one ahead of Maryland's 11.
What I like to see here is Michigan isn't sitting in defensively, playing what we would call a prevent defense. They're still staying high. They're not letting Nielsen play out of the back in a comfortable fashion, really trying to take it to the Spartans with under 10 left. Mutatu. Samake. Back. Runs right into Tejas. Touch back, Broach. Now Broach, as this game's gonna open up here, folks. Broach as Ibarra and Umar Farouk Osman in front of him. Miller did well to get a touch on it, coming back in support. Mutatu. Michigan State and Michigan. The battle of the Big Bear, some great defense. Great defense by the Spartans. Broach looking to attack on his favorite left foot. Spartans collapsing back on top of him with Miller and Nielsen combining to not let him get through. Mutatu also a little bit unlucky to get called a foul on that play. An underrated aspect of his game is his ability to hold up the ball with his back to goal. He did a nice job there on the turn, just unable to keep a hold of it, thus leading to a foul against the Spartans. Reagan. Swike. Popovich probably thinking about a hat trick. He's got two already. Goals number nine and 10 to lead the Big Ten. There is Popovich. What I'd like to see, though, is he was screaming at his fellow teammates to defend and get in, stuck in, make sure they're marking the Spartan guy on that pass throw in. That sort of attitude and attention to detail should help them keep this shutout if they continue this for the next eight minutes. Great to be alongside former Indiana goalkeeper Chris Monroe. I'm Dean Linky. Great double header. You saw the thriller. Penn State coming from behind in Happy Valley to knock off the reigning national champions led by Sasha Sarosky, three to two. And then we rolled right into this one as we give you the standings. If this score holds, this is what the standings will look like. Indiana with the win over the Buckeyes and just one game remaining at 18. They control their destiny. Penn State at 16. Michigan. Bumping up to 12, as I told you, in Michigan State, still with a chance to finish in the top four. As you see, Ferry, the freshman, coming in for Michigan State, still hoping to make some noise here. Remember, a tie keeps the Big Bear with the Michigan State Spartans. They can get one here, it's loose. And a deflection there. Boy, Michigan State, a couple times, remember they hit the post. And immediately with Ferry coming on as a third forward, something created, Mutatu looking to get in, looked like Reagan may have touched it on the way out as it stays Spartan ball. Ogan Wally trying to nutmeg. Swike, and Ogan Wally will have the throw in. Beck comes over to help out. Six minutes, 35 seconds remaining in this one. With the potential for the Big Bear to stay in an arbor for the first time since 2015, Finnerty has got it. Nice job there by Finnerty. Again, all you can do is play what's in front of you. He's been strong off his line. He's collected balls in the air with ease come out on a couple of low balls. Distribution's been pretty solid. All in all, 84 minutes in, great first game for the freshman keeper. Finnerty, Detroit Catholic Central High School. Remember, he played for Detroit City FC in front of those great crowds. The fans there are amazing. Ben Pierman, former assistant coach from Michigan State, coached the team for several years as Joel Harrison almost had a goal in this game. Samake, great job right there, getting a slide tackle on Mutatu. Needed to be timed perfectly, and it was still allowing Michigan to maintain position in their third of the field. Great run here by Michigan. Popovich 
Popovich for the hat trick. Handled by Morse. Jack Callahan with the long run and then fed it to Popovich. We talk all the time about how dangerous Michigan is on the counter, especially with the Spartans throwing numbers forward. Popovich, great attempt to go far post. Morse confident, far out on his line in an appropriate fashion, makes the comfortable save. Fourth save of the game for Hunter Morse. Hear the voice of Shaka Daly directing traffic. Nielsen, Sternberg, Shaka Daly serving as the referee as well, calling out the handball. Absolutely, Sternberg telling the ref in no uncertain terms he thinks that was his shoulder, but looking here at the replay, it might have been a nice little catch with the uh, with the outside of his left shoulder. The Michigan Ultra is making sure that he knows he is their favorite player this evening. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sternberg with words for Hallahan got the yellow card. Hallahan. Twentieth annual Battle of the Big Bear. Michigan State, they're not done, folks. That was almost a handball. Coach Damon Renzing has to be pleased with his team's performance this second half. They've done exactly what he's wanted them to, possess more in their half, connect balls quicker, and now in this last 10, 15 minutes, do a nice job of looking to get into the attack. Barry Finnerty was way off his line, kind of in no man's land. Lucky that Ferry's ball stayed within the six. And this ball going into the channel. Finnerty thinking he might be able to come out and get it. Reagan not quite sure. We're unable to shield Ferry off of it. Turned out well for the Wolverines no matter what. Goal kick from Finnerty. Second ball won by Miller. Tejas, Stone sends it forward. Samake, now Hallahan. Hallahan, looking for the whistle, just stays with it. Hallahan, Jack Hallahan will give it up. Ibarra, into space, Broach, waiting for Popovich. Broach pushed to the ground. Sternberg gets right back up, referee not buying it, Broach. Barra, corner, Hallahan, Hallahan does not retreat to the corner, but now Michigan just milking the clock here as they are two minutes and 20 seconds from grabbing the big bear back and keeping it in Ann Arbor. Ibarra doing a nice job those last couple of attacks to play a smart ball over the top into the space, allow his attackers time to possess it, get their foot on the ball, let these precious seconds tick down, and as you said, hopefully result in the Wolverines keeping the Big Bear here in Ann Arbor. Three straight years, the Big Bears belonged to Michigan State. Michael Pimlot, the rock for the Spartans, reminding his teammates of that. But it does not look like the Big Bear with the green eye and the blue eye is going back to East Lansing. Came up from East Lansing, but as Chris Monroe just said, it's 90 seconds away from staying right here in Ann Arbor. Corner, corner, corner! Sixty-five seconds. Indiana, it's official. They knock off Ohio State five to one. So they sit in first place ahead of Penn State, who had that thriller over Maryland. Don't count out Tim Lenahan's Northwestern Wildcats as far as postseason aspirations along with Maryland, Indiana, Penn State, and Michigan. And really, when the Big Ten tournament starts, you think about 
new coach, Jim McKeldry. He's had some big wins for Rutgers. They got off to a great start. Ryan Mazenoff's Indiana team. Yeah, they got blitzed by, or Buckeye team, rather, got blitzed by Indiana. So easy to say Brian Mazenoff in Indiana, as you know what I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. But Buckeyes could be dangerous. This one, though, all about the battle of the Big Bear. And as the seconds count down, for the first time since 2015, the Big Bear returns to the University of Michigan. Great team victory, start to finish for the Wolverines. Coach Damon Rensing of the Spartans will be pleased with his team's second half performance. Just not enough to keep the Big Bear Trophy here in Ann Arbor.